And I think what Paul is ultimately saying here to the Ephesians and, of course, to us, that prison, he says, no, nah, don't worry about prison. Don't worry about them being stuck in chains or whatever it may be. Something is happening here. Something amazing, something historical, something radical, something eternal that is going on. And it's so much bigger than me. And I get to be a part of it. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world, even my freedom. How many of us have that perception of our Christian faith? Paul says, I will gladly deal with prison or whatever comes my way to be a part of what God is doing in the world. The name of our ministry is 217 Faith, taken from James 217, where we believe that if a faith is not lived out in faithful actions, that is not a faith at all. So if you call yourself a Christian, what are you doing to share the good news of Jesus Christ? How are you being led by him? How are you utilizing the perspectives that God gives us, the perspectives that we are learning today from this passage to help us into this eternal perspective? But in all of that, there is something bigger going on. Something is happening here. Something that you and I can be a part of. And that is God's plan of grace. His ancient surprise to create one new people in Christ continues today. I believe a servant of his gospel can do this thing. And Paul himself says, I am such a servant. And so can we. You see, everything God has ever done has had the ultimate purpose of giving himself glory. Paul is saying that God is not creating a new people called the church for the church's sake, but he is creating it for his name's sake, for God's sake. The church does not exist for itself. It does not exist merely to grow up and to build buildings, to develop mission statements, to promote men to higher positions. The purpose of every believer as members of the church is to preach the good news of Jesus and to serve those in need in the name of the Lord. As my wife reminded us last week, to live out a faith worth living through faithful action. The functions of the church is to fulfill a greater purpose, one beyond human perspective, straight into the Lord's immediate reality, based on God's historical movement, right into the Creator's eternal loving arms. Preaching the gospel and saving souls is not the end, but the means to an end. The supreme purpose of the church is to glorify God by manifesting his wisdom, spreading the hope of Jesus, and introducing humanity to God's kindness, compassion, and grace through our faithful acts of service. So often we have to talk about things like diversity and inclusion because we, as believers of Christ, we have dropped the ball. So often we have to talk about these things because we in the church are not living out inclusive and diverse lives. I'm not talking about colors of skin. I'm not talking about nationalities. I'm talking about how we live out Christ in our interactions with one another. How we allow the Holy Spirit of God in us to deal with the Holy Spirit that is in somebody else. And what interaction and what blessing God brings out of that. The purpose of the universe, of creation itself, is to give God glory. And that will be its reality the long after God's redemptive plan has been fulfilled. When everything is said and done, God's name will always be glorified. Psalm 19.1 speaks of this purpose when he reads, The heavens are telling the glory of God, and their expanse is declaring the work of his hands. You don't think there is a God? Just step outside and look at creation. Paul is saying that the church is not an end to itself. And he is saying, my life is not an end to himself and what he's going through. The real drama of life and redemption can only be understood when we realize that the glory of God is the supreme goal of our all. And that brings us to, our, of course, our final lesson and passage for today. And that is this. Keeping an eternal perspective means remembering that we are here for a reason, which is not about me and it's not about you. I'm not here in this world to achieve my fulfillment in life. It's not about my sense of satisfaction. It's not about my pursuit of happiness. There's nothing wrong with those things. Those things can be important. But ironically, those things can only truly come to be when we abandon their pursuit and begin to focus on a greater perspective. And that is to honor God. 
The Bible says that seek first the kingdom of God and he'll add all other things. So when we honor God, he will add everything else that we need in our lives. 